Cool. So, first of all, thank you for coming on the channel. Thank you. Um, thank you. And I wanted to ask, why the name? Why Prawn Queen? Let's just get that out of the way. Um, Pearl Jam was already taken. <laughs> <laughs> This video is brought to you by Select a Ticket. We'll hear more about them later. For now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me and my guests. I'm Josh, and my guests today, I met them at uh, Backstage Bar and Billiards, a show where Madzilla was headlining, and I've done a review of that. You can find that in my playlist. Um, one of them I actually knew from the past. We'll get to that. They are a straight-ahead hard rock trio. Is that fair to say hard rock? Sure. Metal? Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. But straight ahead. Uh, formed in 2021, their new three-song EP, Raspberry Eyes, is out now. But they're working on another one that's coming out soon. And it probably is out by the time we get uh, th this posted. So please welcome to the channel, Prawn Queen. Say hi, guys. Hi. Hey. Guys. How's it hi. going? Hi. Oh. Was that rambling enough, that intro? <laughs> yeah. I liked it. Did I cover it? Did I... <laughs> yeah, it was good. As I, as I read that, it was like a new, new EP. I'm like, oh, wait. <laughs> it's not new. <laughs> Cool. So, first of all, thank you for coming on the channel. Thank you. Um, thank you. And I wanted to ask, why the name? Why Prawn Queen? Let's just get that out of the way. Um, Pearl Jam was already taken. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the history behind the name? Pearl Jam? Yeah. No. <laughs> One of the band members had uh, like an aunt or a gra grandma named Pearl, and she made this jam that they all loved. <laughs> so that, apparently that was it. There's an SNL sketch where they're trying to come up with band names, and one of their ideas is Pearl Jam 2. <laughs> Pearl Jam 2. <laughs> Pearl Jam. Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> so so why, why Prawn Queen? Who's the shrimp lover? <laughs> Who's the shrimp lover? <laughs> I mean, it, it started off that we named ourselves Prawn Queen. And I don't know how naive we were to think that that wouldn't be already taken. Right. It was taken, and then I was the one. I was already making the logo, and I wanted to salvage what I could of the logo. <laughs> yeah. And then Brendan came up with Prawn Queen, and I was like, okay. And then so yeah, I was able to. And now you have to explain to everybody. No, it's not Prawn Queen. Yeah, it's right. Prawn Queen. Nice. I thought you were, it was going to be some esoteric weird story or whatever. But no. Nope. <laughs> Easy. Nice. Really dumb. Yeah, it's really tough. <laughs> nice. Nice. So. Right off the bat, I just wanted to say you guys put on a solid set at, at Triple B when I saw you there. Thank you. Um, Thank you. And any like Madzilla, they're no slouches. Mm -hmm. they're, they're technical and, and bring it heavy. All the acts that night did, and you, you guys definitely were right up there with them. How long have you been you've been together since 2021? But has it been this lineup? No. Um, originally, we had a different bass player, Glenn. Okay. Shout out, Glenn. Yeah. Um, What's up, Glenn? But yeah, so uh, he, he started the band with us. We actually had a band when we were in high school about 800 years ago. Please. Um, 800 BC. Yeah. yeah. We, had, we had a band called Paranoid, spelled, you know, as okay. immature kids would spell it, I guess, uh, with a Y. Yeah, I was going to so, say with a Y, right? With a Y and, and then like two N's. Two N's. And then we, yeah. Two N's. God. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah. But um, yeah, so we had, we had played for a while, and then we just decided to start something new. So here we are. Cool. And then, how'd you get involved? So, uh, the same thing. I've known these guys since high school, and we've been friends uh, that long. And also, I had played in the band, too. So, it uh, goes back, I mean, if, all the way 20-plus years you ago. You played in Paranoid? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. okay. Sorry, I, 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 was, I thought it was just you two. But So, you, you, it was a natural fit for you. Oh, yeah. It was, uh, I mean, we've known each other so long, so there's that kind of natural ke chemistry and uh, when I when I was in the band previously, I was on uh, rhythm guitar at that time, and Glenn was on bass. Right on. And so, cool. Um, so from there, wanted to add, let's. I want to ask some of my usual interview questions. And the first one I lead off with is earliest musical influence. And when I say that, I mean, what is that earliest like that moment you remember going? I want to do that. Was it a, a particular song or an artist you saw or or what? Uh, for me, I would probably say when I was really young, my grandpa played guitar. Mm -hmm. And so he would let me mess around with it when he would take naps, and I would try to write songs on that. So I would say just like probably that, that, and probably the Olsen twins. <laughs> um, 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they had some good stuff back in the day. Uh, wait, wait. They had an album called Brother for Sale that was pretty solid. <laughs> the, the Nelson Twins? No, the, the Olsen Twins. Mary Kate and Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> and then they had another one called "I Am the Q One," which was all right, but it was it was. You know. Interviews going great. Oh, ha, 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 have you? Did you ever play their their, their their horse riding game? No. no. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm gonna look into that. It, it, it was. It's bad. It's real bad. <laughs> uh, right, I I it, it's on. It, there's a channel I watch on YouTube called oh. uh, Triple Jump, and it's on a segment they call Worst Games. <laughs> ever and it's it's not not the worst game but it's worse than most and it's pretty bad anyway uh next for earliest musical influence i mean oh. the, the, uh, i don't know how to answer this just because <laughs> okay. i mean make something up <laughs> well, makes... i'm i'm probably the one that's going to single myself out here i'm gonna alienate myself here a bit because i'm like i'm really into like electronic music and stuff but okay like, so like i started off with like a lot of industrial and and like EBM and stuff, not not EDM. EBM. I, I really want to specify EBM. Okay. And what does EBM stand for? Electronic body music. It's like danceable industrial, basically. Okay. So okay, but anyway, so that's kind of where I was. But then I knew Brendan from high school, and I hadn't played any instruments. I just really liked music and stuff. And then he was like, "You should play drums." And I was like, "Okay." And so that's how that happened. <laughs> you, should, you should play drums. Yeah. And then I remember at the time, like I I sucked. So like you know, thankfully my parents were gracious enough to buy me a drum set, and I was not good. And then Brendan was better uh -huh. than me in every way. He, he the our my guitarist was better than me at drums, and I was like crap. And so like I started to like I really like focused on getting better and stuff. And now I'd say we're equal, but <laughs> but uh, I'm not but, sure if that's an insult to you or not. <laughs> right? No, no. But uh, but 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 yeah, like uh, that's kind of where that came from. But like, hold on. I don't know if I have necessarily like a, an influence. I mean, I, I was a big fan of like Chris Renna, like uh, the 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 original drummer of uh, Nine Inch Nails. I really oh, liked right. his, sty his style a lot. Oh, I know the name. Um, yeah, but you didn't start out drumming though. No. So like, my question to you is, what was the first moment where you're like? I want to try making music for, you know, I want to go uh, down that pat twisted path. When, when Brendan approached me in high school. You should be a drummer. Right <laughs> yeah. And usually it's a bass player that's like, well, no one else was playing it. You know, we needed right. a bass player. So, <laughs> so right on. How about you? Well, all right. My background. So, um, I attempted, I guess you could say, uh, I wanted to be a singer at first. I thought, um, doesn't everybody. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was probably terrible then. Uh, Still, somewhat now, but <laughs> but no, I I've, I've gotten a little better over the. But I uh, my first band, I actually played with Joe Son. I was, started singing, and we were you know trying to do a heavy. Was like, that Pink Eye Twenty Three? <laughs> yeah, Pink Eye Pink Eye Twenty Three. <laughs> that was Why it. Is the best name. That was <laughs> no. We we were we were kind of it was you know it was like the new metal new metal years new metal phase. But you was know? was it and, worse uh, or better than the other twenty two? <laughs> oh, it was oh, no worse. It was no worse. It was, yeah, it was the worst. This right? is the 23rd pink guy. <laughs> so, um, tried doing that for a little bit, and that was fun. Man, what was, I don't even remember what was our, our old band name from way back. I mean, it's so probably cheesy and new metal ish. And by band, anyway. it was like we were just playing in a, my in a, in a garage. Yeah. <laughs> you know, any parent who lets a, a drummer rehearse and, and play in their home. You're a freaking saint. That's right. true. Yeah. Uh, Even people who can play drums, it's annoying to listen to people playing the drums when you don't want yeah. to hear it. Oh, especially yeah. if you're learning the song. Well, so you're not, oh, yeah, yeah, you're not playing worse. the song. You're worse. playing parts and over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, for, there was a period of time where I was um, I was trying to do like the I'm I'm the guy in the corner playing guitar doing covers for four hours or whatever you know. And my wife told me, I please don't practice new songs that I like. <laughs> when, right. uh, when I'm home, home because you don't finish the song you just you get to a certain point and you stop I'm like yeah I'm working on the parts I, 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 that are that are shaking right <laughs> right on uh, moving on from there I could I didn't find a whole bunch of like deep dive kind of things to ask online but I did find something I had to ask Brandon Brandon sorry it's okay I get that a lot I get that are we gonna see a solo project for uh, Barf Cat uh, yeah so I put out uh, uh, album recently mm -hmm. ish a few weeks ago um yeah i'm pretty proud of it it's on it's just on Bandcamp right now but i'm hoping to do what is it distro kid or whatever and yeah. expand but um yeah i just i enjoy writing i recorded all that at my house and mixed it at my house and everything and 
Um, yeah. So, so Barfcat is, is basically a solo project you did mm -hmm. um, before this? Um, I I mean, on and off, I've been doing... I used to put stuff on SoundCloud, but nobody listens yeah. to rock music on there, so... <laughs> yeah, <it was> like, <laughs> SoundCloud, what's that? All right, yeah. I've heard of this. Uh, I, got, I got to ask, why the name? <laughs> um, the long story Barfcat. short, there's uh, a YouTube channel, Red Letter Media, that watches really bad movies, mm -hmm. and I, can't, I think the movie they watch is called The Uninvited. <laughs> it is a horror movie where a cat, every time it's going to kill someone, another cat comes out of its mouth. It's like a really bad puppet. And so the people, the guys on Red Letter Media were calling it the oh barf God, cat. That's, that's, and every time I heard it, that those words, it just made sense. It rolls off the tongue. Barf cat. Yeah, it rolls off the tongue. I would say yeah. one, one might say violently. <laughs> right. Violently. Yes. <laughs> right on. Um, let, one more question before we get back into kind of the usual ones. Can we talk about the Barrel Normal podcast? Barrel Normal? Yeah, yeah Barrel Noble. Yeah. yeah. All right, we did the theme music for that. Okay. That's about it. That's about <laughs> it. Because we I saw some online. Yeah, we were on it, yeah. Yeah, I was like, we were on it, but I I, I, I got some, like, the, the, the social media post about it. It seemed like there was more to it, but yeah, you did the song for it, so... We, yeah, we went, I don't, what were we talking about on there? there uh, no, we were just talking about, like, ghost stories and stuff. Because oh, yeah. that's the theme behind the, the, their That's uh, right. Podcast. That's yeah. right. Sorry, I write these notes well in advance. Uh, and yeah. Before yeah. before we got there, I was googling um, like really <laughs> stupid. Uh, <laughs> As you do. Yeah. Uh, like like uh, old wives' tale horror stories. So when everyone was telling their experiences, I was telling like really hacky, uh, <laughs> scary stories to tell in the dark. Noise. Just to be an ass. Yeah. You know, it's kind of funny because I just on the way over here I mentioned it. Uh, because I had listened to the episode, and uh, I actually I wasn't in the band at that time, but it's kind of funny that that, that you researched that. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty. That's impressive, actually. Yeah, well, because yeah. because our our, our um, Glenn, the original bass player, he uh, that that's his sister. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah and so, brother-in-law. Okay. Yeah, and, and brother-in-law. Right. That's what yeah. I was going to ask. How did like what was the connection there? Because normally. Right. That, type kind of of podcast, that, that type of podcast. That type of podcast is let's get a band on, unless right. it's like Rob Zombie or something. You know? So I was wondering. I think he's slated next week. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> that, now I know the connection. Cool. All right. Uh, moving on to a no this is another normal interview question. I apologize in advance. How would you define your band's musical style? Elevator pitch. Go. It's like throwing a robot on the beach. <laughs> And then, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably the best way. I can no, no it's so a free <laughs> ride. <laughs> it's like uh, really, that's riding it? riding a dolphin on like a Thursday, but <laughs> the rain. Now you know why during the intro I said they're straight ahead rock band because it yeah. trying to just to, to, I I don't even know what I said in the review quite frankly, <laughs> but um, really that's it. You gotta have an elevator. You gotta have that that ready to go, man. Um, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. I, I like feel like the, when I, people give us genres, it puts us in a box. Right. And people people want to compare you to a band, not a genre. You know what? I should probably ask this instead to people. How have people described your band's musical style? Um, grunge. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I was going to say, like, I think the best well, one... Right. <laughs> mistake. Right. It was not <laughs> coordinated, I promise. <laughs> a, a dare. <laughs> um... I would actually, I would probably describe it as like we're kind of like early to mid '90s like rock, but today, because I don't want like, with a modern with a modern style. Yeah, with a modern kinda, style, yeah. kicking okay. and screaming into yeah. today, right? Dragged from I like kicking and screaming. I like yeah, because because like I would because because I mean, sure, we I've heard grunge, sure, but like yeah. I don't think that we're completely that either. You know, no, like right. we have we have definitely other influences that are not even necessarily in the rock. Like hemisphere, so to speak, but but okay. Yeah. We were listening to Kylie Minogue. And, <laughs> and, uh, she just slaps, man. You, 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 you weren't supposed to tell anybody. The <laughs> track, right after we listened to the Team America soundtrack, can't so. believe he gave away our secret. Yeah. America, <laughs> yeah. Um, to, yeah. You, to, to me, we we have so many different influences, which is a good thing. We're just a melting pot, and mm -hmm. you know, you can hear grunge you can hear rock you can hear punk you can hear metal you can all these different things in the songs well i think what and, sucks uh, too is like you can't say you're metal unless you could shred like dimebag 
right? Yeah. No. You can't say you're punk unless you got Jello Biafra vocals, right? You can't say you're this. So like, even if you try to compare to something, oh, you're yeah. just going to get thrown. You know what I mean? So well, it, but that's, it, why like new, that's why new metal was created. New metal. We're new metal, actually. <laughs> N-E-W. <laughs> oh. If went, Kylie Minogue and Linkin Park... Went time. Did, Kylie Minogue and Linkin Park <laughs> matched up. Now, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, everybody says, oh, we don't have a genre. I don't think we have a genre, but yeah, I would say like the I, early 90s I mean, stuff. I, yeah, we're definitely yeah. influenced by early 90s I used to stuff. be in an indie rock band, and the tagline I came up with, with was, we're just here to make good music. I mean, how vague is that, right? Right. That reminds me <laughs> Our of... Our tagline uh, is, we're not fucking Nirvana. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. There yeah. are jokes there, but I'm not going to go there. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> right on. Um, we're going to take a quick break here. Stick around. Uh... Also, stick around because after this interview, I think we're going to have a music video, right? Something? Um, yeah. yeah. We're going to have something from Brawl and Queens. <laughs> but for right now, we're going to message from Future Josh. And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Past Josh. It's baseball season, and you know what that means. Time to hit the old diamond and grab some grub. But going to a game gets expensive quick, right? Well, good news. Select a ticket is here to save you some dough. Select a Ticket has the best seats and best prices available for any event, including concerts, Broadway shows, and of course, sporting events. Experience the difference with SelectedTicket.com's all-in pricing, with no added fees at checkout and no delivery fees. That means the price you see is the price you pay. Just for watching this video and for being part of Room 6 and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get 10% off every purchase over $100 on merchandise and tickets to your next MLB game. Just enter coupon code MLB10 at checkout. Thanks to Selected Ticket for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show. We're back, and got a couple more questions here, and then we're going to check out something from them. <laughs> In the meantime, uh, by the time you're seeing this, this show is over with. They're playing March 3rd at uh, Triple B, which is Backstage Bar and Billiards. But where is the best place for them to find out more information about what you guys are doing? Uh, we have the typical socials, like we've got Instagram, Facebook. Yep. Those um, will be down in the description, by the way. Yeah. Um, and then as far as like listening to music, like, I mean, we have, our, we, we have it up on Bandcamp, but we also have it on all the other like digital storefronts, so like iTunes and uh, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. And it, what was the other? Oh, my God. Spotify. Yeah, like Spotify, Spotify, Amazon, yeah. Music, Amazon Music, Apple Music, yeah. Apple music all that. Yeah, we've got, we've got, <laughs> yeah, MySpace. MySpace. Yeah, we've got, we've got, we've, we've got two EPs, <laughs> and then so we've got a third coming so, yes. um that probably by now by this point by the time you're watching this it's right on. Out. so we'll have three skylar made a joke about napster that still exists and i don't know if it's still true but when you there was a, a chart made up of like most money per stream of your song yeah napster was the highest wow and i was just like ironic they kind of <laughs> have to be but yeah i uh was it a metallica song <laughs> <laughs> my wife early on in, in when I was tr like trying to make music a, a, you know, a thing, she's like, if you ever end up in a situation where for some reason we are at a party or whatever and, and Metallic is there, do not introduce me to Lars Ulrich or I will punch him in the face. <laughs> My wife is still salty about Napster. And you kids out there, you may not know what's, what we're talking about, but yeah. God bless Napster. That's how I found Wesley Willis. Yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to say anything else except look up Wesley Willis. But I, I mean, him. nowadays, of course, you're like, you, pirate music? What? Yeah, <laughs> right. I thought it was free anyway. Just think, like, uh, I'll see here. Who's the oldest in the band? I think we're all the same age. Really? Yeah, yeah we that's have the same birthday. Really weird. weird. <laughs> oh, <fuck. Dude. laughs> Jan January 12th. Dial it down, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so who, what, what is that? 27? 28? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm 33. Damn. No, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll I'm, an, old, I'm an old look at 33. But when you guys were, were all like kids, you know, pre-10 pre years old, was, um, was the Napster thing like still happening? Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> pre-10. Pre-10. Pre <laughs> that was... Oh man, you I realize so that right it was probably yeah. high, high school. Yeah, we're, yeah. Uh, you realize 1992 was 30 years ago. Thir so no, uh, 31 now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so I don't remember when Napster... I want to say... I wanna say I, my like earliest... Early 2000s? Yeah, it was like early 2000s. I want to say that yeah. was like either late middle school no. or early high school. Napster class. was pre-millennium. No, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it, no, was I, I well, remember, it was about ninety nine two thousand two thousand. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. Like I want to say that was probably when I was exposed to it. Okay, like, it was definitely yeah. before 
the Metallica drama the one, happened. The one but... that surprised me was Carlos Santana jumping on it. Oh, against it? Like, oh, the same, you know, complaining the same oh. thing. I'm like, you're doing, you're doing well, right. Well, I remember he had that, that album, that really popular album. Right. Him. I just wonder now if they look back at that time and, and how They're things like, are now and oh, be like, no. you know, exactly like, oh. Well, well the, the, the funny thing is Lars was, was kind of right about it. And it, like... I, maybe not the way he went about it. I, I get that. At the yeah, time. I think that's but the problem. The, with the way he went about But, it, like, look at people just, not only did they start downloading music more, but it's all streaming now. It's right. People don't buy CDs anymore. They don't support the bands right. or the artists anymore. It's it's. And weren't they it, trying to say they were stepping up for the little guy? I mean, yeah. everybody took it as Metallica wants money, but... But but in reality, in reality, in the long run, he was right. He kind of foresaw what would happen... Right. In the mainstream, and now but it's. But I would just, say the flip side is now the record labels have no power. So now anybody yeah. could really take the reins and do whatever they want. Right. I mean, it's, you're not going to be as astronomical unless you're in that. No way, yeah. You're going to have to. But it, you could still control yourself and probably make more money the, on the, your own. The, the creativity is there more now. Like right. people have more of the freedom. I agree. Uh, and things like creative freedom. Things like, like musically. They don't have to follow like, direction. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. and, and, and things like musically, which became TikTok. Open the door for you know so many artists that are now getting like discovered because people like their stuff, not because right. yeah a, a marketing yeah. campaign was done or whatever. And I, I've seen more than one you know TikToker who went on to you know it's like I'm putting on you know a show and now I'm going on tour and, and people are showing up. Yeah, that's just cool. because you know of that. And that I'm 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 on the fence, you know, because I'm I'm like well that's heartwarming and that's awesome for you, but at the yeah. same time. I'm 50. <laughs> Where was this when I was 20 something? Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. But you know, that's just old, old man yelling at clouds. So <laughs> right on. Um, next question. I wanted to ask your favorite show memory playing as prawn queen. And it, it could be where one, it went off the rails or you checked off some rock star checklist things or someone went to jail, whatever. Hmm. For, for me, and I, I'll, I'll give you a, for instance, now this is uh, I was singing in a cover band. It, it does that. I don't know why. Uh, I was singing in a cover band, doing you know the four hour gig, playing a Mr. D's, you know that kind of crap. But it was New Year's Eve. Place is packed. Not a single person tipped. <laughs> New Year's Eve. But um, suddenly I see a guy running across the dance floor with a mop towards the bathrooms. I'm like ooh, well it's New Year's Eve. Someone's you know puking or something. Guy got stabbed. Oh, oh my! Right? Turns yeah. out he survived. With but the mop? It, <laughs> like, no, but it was still weird. It was just like, well, I'm gonna keep singing "Brown Eyed Girl," but okay. Uh, so, so, what's your favorite show memory? Mm, I don't. I mean, with this band, I don't know if we've had anything too memorable. Yeah, I mean, we. Like... Uh, I don't know. I remember when we were in, when we had Paranoid, we opened up for Local H at a bar. I was here just in town. thinking okay. that was yeah, cool. That was probably our like the most exciting thing. We opened for Local H. That's and... true because the three of you have been in you know other bands together. So yeah, yeah, let's open it up to what's your favorite show memory period of performing? Yeah, Local H, huh? Yeah, we opened for Local H, and I remember the sound guy did a really bad job, and we had to waste time like halfway <laughs> through the set. Like we had to, he had to redo the drums, and there was a crowd and stuff. And when I, I remember, I'll never forget this because wow. I was behind the kid, and I was like, I can't hear anything. And when he was finally doing stuff, and I could finally hear my bass drum, you hear the crowd go, "Yeah!" And I was like, "Yeah." Was cool. <laughs> but then that cost like ten yeah, minutes. We had to play like four songs. Yeah, we played like oh, four songs. Sucks. Yeah, the good old like, the good old Boston days, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Boston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember, was, I remember like, like blowing out one of my amps at one of our shows. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what happened to my amp? It just doesn't work. No yeah. You guys are all from Boston? <laughs> no, no, uh, no, no, no. There was, was a venue. Club. Oh, okay. There yeah, used the to venue. be there um, used to be a venue uh so in Maryland and Flamingo. Yeah, yeah, Maryland Flamingo. It was, it was like it, a bar was, and grill and venue called the Boston. Yeah, it was yes. in the, it was in the same shopping center as that Target that's right there. It's ringing a bell, but I I mean I've been here like 17, 18 years, but I, it was a, I wasn't really into the scene at all yeah. until, you know, like ten years ago. So shoot, it's probably been gone a at least that time. long, yeah. yeah. Probably Close to that uh, yeah. time. That is one thing about doing the reviews I do for uh, I do live show uh, reviews and venue reviews and people's music reviews, and I I hear about all these venues now. But after quarantine, it was real easy to figure out. Okay, what's gone? Mm-hmm. And oh, I was yeah, really surprised. True. I was surprised Triple B was still around, quite frankly. But there's a lot of uh, venues that are they somehow managed to hang in there, and now they're putting on shows that 
generally are packed. Yeah. And people yeah. are, people, I think there's we're still, there's a lot of clubs lately. That yeah, there's definitely We're a lot still more in that honeymoon period of, oh, my music's back. Right. You know, I remember, like, I was at Triple B for one of the first shows after we could have music again in Vegas. And it didn't, like, it was so crazy packed. And it didn't matter what was being played on stage. It could have been, you know, po- juggling polka or whatever, you know. <laughs> right. So, cool. Yeah. Um, hold on. One more. Okay. This is another one because it's it. funny. So, okay. this is, again, from us. When we were really young, so, like, we were still high school, like, un- under 21. So, basically, what was the name of that venue that was on Maryland? Not not Boston, obviously, but, like, there was another like one. Moose Moose or something? Moose, just, McGill- Moose McGillicuddy's. Oh, I, maybe, yeah. I just remember we we played there, and because we were underage, we couldn't hang out in there. Yeah, until I got a story. We, had to, we had to sit in the alley. Yeah, we had to sit in the alley in the back. Yeah. And I remember <laughs> we were just out there, us three, just chilling back there. And then, like, uh, one of the dudes, like, one of the staff... <laughs> you remember this? Yeah. He just well, he walked out there. He was just being chummy. He was just talking to us like he was probably on his break or something. He was right. just talking to us, and I don't remember how where how this conversation started or how it got there. I just remember it's somehow because we were young. So yeah, we were like, young and yeah. immature, right? And right. so like somehow the conversation went into the direction of him saying something like, "Oh yeah, but when I discovered masturbation, I, there was nothing in the house <laughs> I hadn't masturbated on." Yeah, and I'll never <laughs> forget that. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I was like, wow!" And I was like, oh, so, "Good thing we're not in the bar." We're, you know, we're safe in this alley. <laughs> right. This guy's in talking. Vegas. Yeah. yeah, they really knew what they Yeah, doing. so I had wow. mental images of just like, like on animals, on a lot of, a lot things, of walls. We weren't allowed inside <laughs> until we could play and then they would make us leave. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's, yeah, and that's that that true. That is, that's why uh, venues like Eagles Airy and um, American Foreign Legion and, and now uh, The Space. Which are all ages. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Space is all ages. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't know that. space yet. No, I didn't know that. Some 10 year old kid was washing. Yeah, and I, I was like, wow. yeah, you walk in, there's a bar. Man. But yeah, it's all ages. And so uh, I love all ages clubs because also they tend to pack the bill. I um, I, I saw uh, American, or I, rather, uh, Eagles Airy. There was like eight bands on the bill or something. I'm like, I don't care wow. what the ticket price is. That's got to be worth it. <laughs> it's crazy. So, um, Moving on. Last question. You made it. Oh wait, sorry. I had a story about being underage. So I my first band I ever performed in was called Magic Viewing Patch MVP, and uh, <laughs> there's a whole story. But I was 21 when I met them. They were all 18, like seniors in high school, and we were good. Like imagine the Stones with Eddie Vedder singing. Okay. Yeah, we like we were good, and. Uh, because they were underage all the time. Break down, get out. Yep. And that was never more clear. This is another one of those, uh, like, check off my little rock star list thing. We opened for Iron Butterfly. Oh, wow. In oh, okay. Vita, baby. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Met the singer. Jerk. But he didn't give a rat's as who we were. Some local, you know, kid. Yeah. You know, but, but yeah, uh, that was one of those, I got to hang out inside the place while they had to be outside. But their parents were freaking loving it. <laughs> it like, yeah. So we got this gay opening for some band called Iron Butterfly. <gasps> <Yeah. laughs> so that that's one of those like claim to fame. And that's yes. literally um, you new musicians. This it's all about. I happen to walk in with an audio cassette tape. Now you see kids. It's an old joke, but <laughs> you used to have these things. <laughs> but I had an audio cassette tape, and I just walked. It's like, hey, blah blah blah, you know. And he's like, well, actually, are you guys? Can you play on such and such a date? No fire and butterfly, and I'm like, I know I didn't hear you <laughs> say that word, but I was like, yeah, yes, we fucking can. <laughs> we'll play for free, uh, and it's just being in the right place at the right time. Uh, last question, ready? We're gonna bring it back to the first question I asked, which was earliest musical influence. Sorry, the first question was what's with the band name. <laughs> um, let's pretend we're talking a little you. I ask this of all my prey. You OG Room Sixers will know this. But what we're doing is we're basically we're talking to new musicians. But I want to talk to the little you that got inspired to do music in the first place. What is one thing that you wish someone had told you before you went down this twisted road that is playing music? And don't say change your strings. Uh, stay in school. <laughs> <laughs> don't do drugs. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, must have been on everything. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <Exactly>. right. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, should have known that way longer yeah. ago. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, like, I think 
I think with, with especially if you're going to be writing music, playing playing instruments, stuff like that. Like I think the one thing I'm I'm kind of happy I didn't do is I didn't over educate myself, and I did a lot of trial and error and just learning by just doing stuff on my own. Gotcha. Especially with recording and all that stuff. And I feel like even though it's kind of stupid in the long run, you develop your own style for things, your own way. And um, although I lack in technique and a lot of stuff, I would probably say I, I'm glad I stuck to that because you stumble upon your own your own style and sound as you go on. So mm -hmm. I probably didn't answer the question the right way. No, that's perfect. You, I just reiterated my path. Basically, <laughs> go go the Nirvana route or the, the Dave Grohl route, which is play shitty until you don't. Well, that, yeah. That's pretty much what Dave, <laughs> Dave Grohl basically said was, we just got some instruments and sounded like crap until we didn't. <laughs> right. And then we, yeah. then we played shows and we... Still played sound like rap, and then, yeah. then we didn't. I mean, he, Dave Grohl, does not follow music theory whatsoever. No, no. Other, other than like, yeah, okay, stands like pillows yeah. on the bed. But, but like his the way he plays guitar, right? He does like he drums. plays it like a drummer. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, next. Oh, for me, I don't, I don't even know if I'd take something or, I don't know. I feel like. The more experience I've gotten over the years and the more I've learned, you know, the better I've gotten. Like, it it, it, it takes time and it takes, uh, you know. So that's what you would tell the little you? Uh, it, it, it's like you said, it was trial and error. You know, you got, you got to stumble before you, before you can run. You know, you're going to, you're going to fall, you're going to make mistakes, but you, you learn from those mistakes and you just keep, you know, keep make grinding. Them. Yeah. Keep making, keep making them or yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Next. Um, I think the main thing I would tell myself is because, you know, life gets in the way, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There was a time where I played off and there was a time where I didn't. And it was off and on. I kind of wish I had kept up with it because I feel like rusty even today, even though I've been, we've been playing again for like two, three years now. Right. I still feel like I'm not at the prime I was back in high school, mm -hmm. even though like I do feel like I'm doing different things and stuff than what I did before. But like, I wish I would have kept up with it because yeah, like I said, life right. kind of gets in the way. And, and but, yeah. And and you know what? If you've been doing music for a while, lessons are okay. Yeah. Le lessons are a good thing. Yeah. Uh, there was a story where, who was it? Was it Sting? No. Uh, oh, crap. It's going to kill me. It's like, it was like Sting, some famous, you know, rocker yeah. or whatever, music, Sting, somebody like that, where suddenly it was like, you know, I never took lessons. Calls up some guy to teach him lessons. How would you like to be that? Oh, no. Neil Peart. Wow. Yeah. Oh, Neil Peart. Peart. Okay. Neil Peart. Yeah. At the like, height of Rush, decided so so to take lessons. And if Neil Peart, <laughs> right. who, who played literally everything on drums. <laughs> right. Very technical. Had it all around him. Yeah, uh, yeah he was pretty But good. how much would you ha <laughs> hate to be that teacher? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, you're like, oh, oh, uh, am I a good teacher? <laughs> yeah. Point to him. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I just couldn't believe when I, I heard that. Anyway, thank you very much for hanging in there. Uh, stick around for whatever it is like we're going to have from them in terms of content. But if you want to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address down in the description or click the Room 6 social media link. I'm all over the place. That's also where you can find ways to support the channel, such as Room6.shop for merch. Made it myself. I did. And um, But if you really want to help out the channel, click the link for the sponsor down in the description if uh, that sponsor spot interested you at all. In the meantime... We're going to uh, temporarily say goodbye while we uh, watch a thing. Temporarily say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.
I want to thank Prawn Queen for coming on the channel. It was a great interview and an awesome whatever the hell that was. <laughs> in the meantime, like I said, if you want to be on the channel, hit me up down in the description. If you want to see more videos like this, click up here. If you'd like to hear my own music, which is not like theirs, not nearly as good, click over there. And if you'd like to subscribe, it really does make a difference. Please click up there. Don't forget to ring the bell so you'll be notified when I post all the new stuff. You know the drill. In the meantime, remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, guys. Bye. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. See you later. Hey, there's always one. <laughs> so